Hi there, it is so good to see you. Thanks for stopping by today. I'm John Merriman, and this is your Tuesday morning guitar song. Carol King has said that when she was in high school, she was the girl that all the guys would call when they wanted to talk about another girl. She was always the friend. She was the counselor. She was the comforter. She was the one who could shed a little light on the gnarliest high school romantic situation. And isn't that what Carol became to so many of us in the early 1970s? Wasn't she the friend who always walked with us through those gnarly romantic situations? She was our comforter and she was our counselor with those great Carol King songs. Her 1971 album, Tapestry, was like a group hug for a generation, and it's still going on today. Carol King was born Carol Klein in 1942 in Manhattan, and she was raised in Brooklyn. Her father was a New York City firefighter, and her mother was a school teacher. Talk about someone who knew exactly what she wanted to do with her life at an incredibly early age. She was always fascinated by music and trying to understand it. At four years old, she begged her mother for piano lessons so she could play this music she was hearing. Now, something happened to Carol, and I don't know if they still do this today, but when she entered kindergarten, she was so intellectually advanced that they skipped her forward to the second grade right away. That put her two to three years younger than her classmates. And this age discrepancy became a situation she really had to deal with later on, especially in romantic situations. She was always more the observer, therefore. She was on the sidelines instead of the dance floor. And she poured herself into music at that time. Her sweet spot and the spot she felt secure and comfort in was behind a piano. She was observing the world around her through high school, and she was writing songs about it. Now, being a high school songwriter is not an incredibly rare thing, but Carol had a few unique situations in her life which propelled her into the music business at a very early age. One was she had incredible self-confidence. She knew her songs were good. She knew they were as good as anything on the radio, and darned it all, if she was not going to get them there. And two, she was being raised in New York City, which was the songwriting capital of the world. At 14 years old, she got herself over to 49th and Broadway, which was the Brill Building, where all the songwriters worked. She marched in there. She demanded to be heard. She would not back down, and she would not leave until somebody gave her audience. Well, all barriers fell in front of this gonzo over the top teen, and they listened to her, and they offered her a job. She was 14 years old, and uh, she started doing songwriting demos. She would play and sing on songwriting demos where songwriters could go sell them. And some of her songs got heard, and she was selling some of her songs into the teen market. She also worked with a friend of hers over there, which she had met at the Brill Building, another young person, Paul Simon. They worked together. Well, remember, Carol graduated from high school at a very early age, and she was 17, and she was already enrolled in Queens College. And there she met a young man three years older than her, Jerry Goffin. And he was studying chemistry, and he was also a songwriter. He was a lyricist, and she was a songwriter. And so they started writing songs together. Also that year, they started having babies together. She got pregnant, and back then, you got married. So she got married at 17 to Jerry Goffin. Now, they started writing songs, as I said, and they wrote some incredibly good songs, and they were heard because of her music connections. And Goffin King became one of the greatest songwriting duos of the early 1960s. They wrote classic songs together, like Up on the Roof, The Locomotion, you Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman. Those were all Goffin King songs. John Lennon was quoted as saying that him and Paul's early goal was to be the Goffin King of the United Kingdom. That's how famous that songwriting duo had become. 
Well, in 1969, the songwriting partnership and the marriage fell apart, and uh, Carol moved to California to start the next chapter of her life, which was to become a performer. When she was in LA, she early on met a young man who would become her fast friend and her companion for her life. It was James Taylor. She played in James' band around Los Angeles, and it was James that helped Carol become a performer. Carol King had stage fright, and James Taylor worked with her. He helped her get out in front of the band and be comfortable on a stage. In 1971, Carol, James, and Joni Mitchell were in the studio together doing Carol's Sizemo album, Tapestry. And that album put Carol out in front of the band for the rest of her life. She went on to record 25 solo albums. She's won every musical accolade and award that's in existence, and she even has a Broadway play based on her life. It's called Beautiful, The Carol King Story. It plays on Broadway, and it's been a hit since 2014. Well, Carol King has won every accolade, and now Carol King is the topic of your Tuesday morning fun fact. Here's your Tuesday morning fun fact. Carol King has won every accolade and award in existence, but there might be one that has a special place in her heart. Carol King is in an incredibly small, select group of people who have had an international hit love song written in their honor. In 1959, Neil Sedaka wrote his first hit record, Oh Carol, for Carol King. They were both in high school together in Brooklyn at separate high schools, but they did date briefly. It was Neil's first hit. It was huge. It was an international hit. Also in 1959, Carol King married Jerry Goffin, and Jerry wrote a response song for O oh Carol. He called it O'Neill, and they released it as a record, as a single. It went nowhere, which proves that sometimes it's best just to let these things die. And there you are. There's your Tuesday morning fun fact. For our guitar song today, we're going to go back to 1960. This was a number one hit for the Shirelles, a great Goffin King song, and it also appeared on the 1971 album Tapestry. So please don't go away. I'll be right back.
Thanks so much for being the wonderful person that you are. Thanks for sharing the show. Thanks for liking the show. You helped me get it out there and I really appreciate it. Come back and see me next week. And remember, you're never ready for your day without a song in your heart. Bye now. Thank you.